And for those of you that don't know me, I am uh, Tara Cummins. My company's name is Akamai Marketing. I got to call myself the head brainstormer. In other words, chief problem solver. And I'm also uh, the immediate past president of the only social media professional organization in the country, Social Media Club. So without further ado, I'd like to ask this audience, I'd like to start off by asking you with a show of hands, how many of you or your companies are using social media today? Oh my gosh, two years ago I asked that question and not nearly as many hands went up. So how many of you have attempted to identify whether your use of social media is working for you or whether you're getting a return? Okay, excellent, and how many of you are frustrated by that process? Good news for you, you're not alone. Uh, social media is definitely one of those uh, processes that um, measurement is, is an evolving feature, okay? And one of the things I want you to understand about social media measurement is that the measurement itself shouldn't happen within the platforms of which we're given. In other words, don't measure your success by the number of Facebook likes you have. Measure your success by the business objectives that you have. If you notice that 35% of the companies measuring social media are satisfied, we have a disconnect here because 61% of them measuring things like followers and likes. We are also experiencing an evolution of measuring social media. Um, it is a conglomerate of a lot of different industries. We're talking about web analytics, we're talking about things like word of mouth, which I'm going to speak to a little bit today. So the industry is evolving and there is no single way. One other thing I'd like to point out to you is that these types of metrics are single function. In other words, they purely speak to some marketing elements. Social media touches a lot of different types of uh, departments. If you use social media cross-functionally, then these sorts of things, especially likes, aren't gonna do you much good to measure at all. So today I'm gonna talk to you just a little bit about how to measure social media, what to measure, and a sample ROI from my point of view you're going to find out that not a single value is, a, is arrived from a like or a tweet. That might be exciting to you, it might also be a little disturbing to you as we move through the process, because it means that you're going to have to dig just a little bit deeper to figure out what works for you and works for your company. It's a little bit more like traditional marketing than anybody really ever thought to begin with. The other thing I want you to understand before we get started is that social media is really just the support mechanisms to your other business objectives. It isn't a panacea, it is not going to solve all your problems, and it works really, really well when you manifest it with your other marketing goals, your marketing avenues, and your other departments. You're also likely to have to do some what I call construction before you really get started in measuring your social media. You're going to want to make sure that your website is suitable for conversion. You may define conversion by a sale, you may conver define conversion by an email address. You're gonna to wanna to make sure your website is easy to update so that you can uh, deliver content that's interesting to your social media community and essentially drive them back to your website. The one thing that a lot of people miss about social media is that your website is the single place in the digital world that you have 100% control over. Someday, Facebook is going to go away. I know it seems impossible to imagine, and I myself could never predict when that's going to happen, except to say, I bet it will. And when that happens, all that data that's on Facebook about your company and all those and that entire community that you built will evaporate, and you will have nothing. So, driving communities back to your website, right, I know, dead silence, holy cow, nothing, you mean it's gonna do nothing. So driving communities back to your website is a really key feature and a key opportunity in social media. But if you don't get some of that information about them, then you won't also be able to track them through your sales process, right? So it all starts with getting to know who your community is and being able to track them through your systems. One of the common misnomers about social media is that there is no investment. It's free. Hmm. How many of you using social media have found that it's actually free? Right. The tools are free, and we love that, but the manpower, the time it takes for you to develop content, the ongoing co commitment to participating in it, that is not free. Neither is the development that you do in your website and the way that you manage the customer throughout the process. If you do not make these investments, you will find that your return is greatly diminished. Another piece of uh, return that you need to consider is there are a lot of different uh, platforms out there that will help you manage a variety of different social media platforms and will also help you 
measure to some degree some of the success that you're having. Some of these uh, services are $25 a month. They're extremely attainable. And some of the high value ones run up to $2,000 a month, a user. So you are going to, if not today, some time in the future, going to have to decide which you have more of. Do you have more time or do you have more money? Now, in small business, a lot of times the answer is I have more time. I can spend the time to put together a report. It doesn't have to look ridiculously slick and I know what I'm trying to get at. But in larger business, you may decide that the time it saves you to create a report that's auto-generated, that gives you exactly the information you wanted and maybe even connects with your CRM, is well worth that $2,000 a month in man hours. Regardless, you'll be faced with this decision at some point or another. One of the things that we're going to talk about today is word of mouth marketing. How many of you are familiar with this term? Yeah, okay, excellent. So this is sort of where social media gets a little sticky, okay? Because word of mouth marketing is exceptionally hard to measure. And it always has been. For businesses to understand what it means for their customers to reach across the fence and say, here's the business card of my insurance agent, my real estate agent, my car guy. For businesses to understand that has always been extremely difficult. Today, with the use of social media, we have a small sliver of insight, finally. We can digitally track this kind of thing. And yet it's still extremely difficult. Revenue, on the other hand, fairly easy to identify. We don't always know where it's coming from, and sometimes that's our gap, but we do know when something's making an impact on our bottom line. So we talked just a little bit about some of the, uh, the, the ways that you measure social media and the, and, and the business models in which you use. I want you to take a look at some of the qualitative and quantitative ways that you can use social media in your business. Now again, I'd like you to notice that not a single one of these things says get 500 followers on Facebook, find 300 retweets on Twitter. Not a single one of these things is attainable, helps you identify these business goals. Your business goals may be different. With a couple of exceptions, I've never met a business that didn't say I'd like to increase sales. Uh, <laughs> but now, even that simple, that simple comment, whenever somebody says to me, I would like to increase sales and I'd like social media to support that objective, one of my very first questions is, well, what's, your, what's the problem? What's the hindrance? What do we have to do to, to make that sales process a little more slick? For a lot of companies, it's awareness. For some companies, it's a brand appreciation, okay? So those are some of the qualitative things that we, can, that we want to try and include and that social media can support. The quantitative issues, obviously, I'm going to use an example of a key performance indicator, a KPI, for customer service just a little bit later. And I'm going to tell you a great story about a personal experience I had. So I want to talk just a few minutes about the word of mouth marketing concept. Again, we talked about what it was, and this is why it's so important. A lot of businesses ask me, why should I really track this segment of the business? Why should I really care? I mean, I know it's happening, and yeah, yeah, I know it's important, but really, what's, what's the opportunity for me in tracking this kind of impact? Well, what I tell businesses is, if you ever hope to sell your company, if you ever hope to have investors, or you do have investors, or you think that your customer ever makes a decision based on what kind of reputation your brand has, then you definitely are interested in tracking some of this word of mouth activity. Social media supercharges this activity, puts it on steroids. Yesterday, I could only, yesterday, a couple years ago, I could only talk to my immediate community, my neighbors, maybe my friends and my family. Today, through the use of social networking, I have a community of literally thousands of people at my disposal, and they have me at their disposal. I have been able to, to create relationships online first before I ever used the business, the product, or set foot in that store. It matters, and I'll tell you why it matters. Because for the first time, I'm able to get some insight into what's important for that company and why it's relevant to me. And this works in both the business to business and the, and, uh, the consumer marketplace. So I'm going to show you a, a methodology for word of mouth. This was developed by far bigger brains than myself um, at McKinsey Research. But the reason I like to share this 
methodology is I think that it quantifies some of the, um, d some of the elements that we need to consider in social media. The first is we talk about the messages. How many messages about our company, about our product, and maybe even about our competitor? Let's not forget the opportunity that we can monitor what people are saying about our competitor in social media as well. Some nice little insight there. So we like to take a look at how many messages are being sent. Is there a lot or is there a few? Now, simply having only a few doesn't mean that it's worthless because it also depends on the network and the sender. And when we talk about the sender, we talk sometimes about influence. We talk a lot about influence. This is a really hot topic in my industry because it's really hard to identify influence. On the other hand, simply said, it just means, is the person delivering the message valued by its community members as an authority on that topic? Okay? So some of us are uh, considered influential in a couple of spaces. Some of us are considered influential in hundreds of them. But one thing I can tell you is that no matter how many times I talk about what a cool jetliner I'm on, no one in my community is going to take me seriously, and it's almost a worthless mention for the business, for the company. Why? Because I'm not an expert on jets. I don't know a single thing about them, except for the fact that they get me where I need to go. So we have to consider who the influencers are, and we also have to consider the networks. Now, what are we talking about networks? Open networks? That's things like Twitter and Facebook. They don't share anything in common, and they don't deliver any consistent uh, channel to the users. They're simply a place for people to gather together. There are channels, let's just say like Wikipedia, which are a little bit more closed and a little bit more trusted. Yes, Wikipedia is a crowdsourced tool, but your answers in Wikipedia and your contributions in Wikipedia are previewed and trusted by the community. Okay. So you may be able to set up a community of users for yourselves in your own organization. There's a great book on this, and it's called Wikibrands. And um, it's really developed for pretty large businesses, but I think as, as, year, as years go on, really going to be able to see more and more businesses create their own communities digitally, again, using that backbone of their website, okay? so that we won't we have to rely so much on social networks. The other thing that's really interesting about social networks is they are getting a little bit more splintered. And so depending on what your demographics are, what your interests are, what the interests are of your community, uh, they may or may not be in the, big, in, in, the, in the place where you think you should be. So you've got to give yourself a little time and a little chance to f move through that process and figure out which networks you want to be on. My nieces and nephews, all of whom, uh, those who are under under 20, almost none of them are on Facebook. They're not interested. Probably because I'm there. But <laughs> and so's their mom and so's their grandma. So what this is sort of a challenge for marketers because where are these kids headed? We don't really know right now. We know that they're doing a lot of texting, which doesn't help us at all in this in this forum. But I suspect that there is a place for them. I suspect that I don't know where it is yet. If you're marketing to that target market though, you really want to keep an eye on that. On the other hand, the fastest growing group of users on Facebook is 55 plus. Great, so it's a good thing to know if you're a marketer. The last piece of the impact equation is the, is the content. Is the content relevant to what triggers people to buy, right? And this requires an understanding on the part of the business and the marketer. What does make people want to buy my products and what is the impediment to them buying it right now? Do they think the product doesn't work well? Do they think it doesn't taste good? Do they don't like the design? What is the problem? And then are people sharing the solutions the way that I want them to share them or not? That also impacts the value of a particular piece of word of mouth. And then, of course, the source. I personally have had this experience, or this is just what I've heard, right? So these things develop the word of mouth equity. Now, why am I telling you all this? Well, because when I show you the ROI model later, I'm going to show you some ways in which I utilize this model from my point of view. If you know how much it costs to uh, obtain a customer, you can actually put a dollar figure on this kind of an equation. Okay, we weight it out depending on the way on, on your priorities, and we can actually put a dollar figure on it. If you don't know that information, or maybe this seems a little complicated for you, then you can utilize it as a key performance indicator. You can track this as a number and a value number that you can watch rise or fall with your 
marketing efforts. Now I know that that's really beautiful and awesome and really exciting, but I know what you really want to know is, I'm a small business owner, I'm a medium sized business owner, I don't have all day to spend with spreadsheets, so I want to see some data. What's some stuff that I can do quick, at a glance? So I wanted to show you a couple of key performance indicators that I like to utilize in social media. You may have different ones, in fact, I bet you do. But I wanted to open your mind again to the way that we utilize social media to empower other types of information that are relevant to the business. What we're looking at here, not a single thing, not a like, not a retweet, not amongst it at all. We're talking about downloads and information that you're, getting, that you're giving your community. By giving free content to your community, that's essentially the carrot. In exchange for your email address, I will give you some free content. How many of you have downloaded white papers, slideshows? Right, exactly. Because you just, you were really curious about it. And, and it's free, and you can always unsubscribe. Businesses know this, and your business should take advantage of it. Think about the type of content that you can offer uh, your, your community, and then track those sources. I also like this because a lot of people say, well, how would I track downloads and webinars, not that kind of stuff from a non-digital source? And I say, well, I think it would be really cool to have two separate landing pages, one for the digital sources that I spread throughout my social media networks, and the other one, uh, maybe it's a QR code that I use in my print ads, right? And that sends them to a different landing page. Now I can actually track which of my marketing efforts are more effective. I can also use a, 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 web, a separate landing page on my radio campaigns, right? So I can track my campaign types and see what works. Now, it's not to say that, let's say you do all three landing pages and you get the most traffic from social media. Don't be lulled into thinking that social media is the only thing you should do. I actually don't believe that. Because social media and digital uh, get a lot of credit for last touch attribution. Last touch attribution just means I get credit for it because that was the last thing you did. When in fact, it may have been three or four different steps that engagements I had with your company, your brand, your advertisements, that finally led me to look online and see what your company was all about online. Then I gave you my email, and all of a sudden, all us digital marketers were like, woohoo! You know, finally, I can show my company some ROI. Well, the thing is, is that, hold on, folks. I mean, I'm, I'm all for giving credit where credit's due, but we may or may not be able to attribute 100% of that benefit. On the other hand, how great that we can finally attribute it at all. How great that we can finally say, I know a little bit more about my customer today than I did yesterday. Another one of these key performance indicators, and this is about followers, subscribers, subscriber to blogs, to fans. Again, this is a correlation uh, key performance indicator. In other words, this is not a direct causation. But it is an interesting method to tr of tracking how effective some of your social media is. Are your, is your revenue increasing with the number of followers, subscribers, and fans you have? If it's not, then you can ask yourself, why or why not? But this is a very easy, quick way to see if you're having success or failures. And you might even divide this out. You may, might even divide it out by uh, platform. You might say followers to revenue on Twitter, followers to revenue on Facebook, just to see if some of which platform is working best for you. This is the story that I have been dying to share with people on a larger scale. I just wrote a blog post about it. So I really believe that customer service um, belongs in social media, and increasingly so. It's a real challenge for businesses because um, social media is on 24-7 and not all businesses are. So what do we do about that? Well, I think one of the really easy ways to address that is to just simply say, we're here from 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. Um, here's how to reach us offline if you really need to reach us immediately. But I. I think moving forward, we're really going to see social media used as a customer service tool. Twitter in particular, not exclusively, but in particular. A couple of uh, months ago, actually in January, uh, my hosting provider is GoDaddy. And I was having, it was really, my, my website was loading incredibly slow. So when I called GoDaddy, they said, yep, we see that you have a problem. We're going to move you to a different server. And I said, well, that sounds great. 
and they said, yeah, well, it is going to require some downtime, uh, 24 to 72 hours. But 72 hours is the outside. I mean, it, it, won't, it won't take 72 hours. Don't worry about it, Mrs. Cummins. OK, well, it's Friday afternoon. I can probably deal with that. On Tuesday morning, Hawaii time, I still did not have a website. I waited just a little bit longer before I sent a nasty gram tweet to GoDaddy that said, thank you, GoDaddy, for helping me create a scenario I never could have done without, my, without your help. Website down, five days and counting. I got a lot of response from that, uh, from, from the community. There were a lot of people having GoDaddy issues at this particular time. And because of that, I didn't actually expect a response. But within 15 minutes of that tweet, I did receive a response from GoDaddy. Within an hour. My problem was solved. 140 characters, one tweet, did what three hour long phone calls and five days could not do. Guess who's a happy customer? Yes. But not only am I happy, I did kind of wonder, did GoDaddy resolve my problem just a little bit faster because Twitter, I have a fairly large Twitter community? It sort of creeped me out and it sort of made me feel bad for the people that didn't maybe have communities as large as mine. On the other hand, why wouldn't they use that information to make a decision, right? I would encourage every single one of my customers to take a look and prioritize according to what the impact that those people could have. I sort of knew what I was doing when I flamed this war a little bit with some of these people. But at the end of the day, I'm a happier customer. Not only did I get what I needed to, uh, solved, I also renewed a bunch of my services and even bought a couple more because my my trust in GoDaddy has been reinforced, whereas it was waning quickly. I'd been a customer for many years. Every time I called, I got the old, yeah, 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 you're in the queue. Who likes being in the queue? I hate being in the queue. <clears throat> so I got myself out of the queue. I got myself back to being happy. I got my website back up. Now, the really interesting thing from a business perspective is not just the customer service satisfaction, which I also found it interesting that GoDaddy did not send me a customer service satisfaction survey, unlike they do every single time I call. So they don't even know how happy I am, aside from my one tweet, thank you very much for, putting, for fixing my problem. But what about that person on the other line at GoDaddy, who was probably managing three or four different customers at once, instead of the one customer on the phone grinding it out with them? What about the fact that that person is probably much more efficient than the average telephone person? I, also, I, I think that uh, GoDaddy did miss an opportunity. They didn't ask me if I, wanted, if I needed any more help or if I wanted to buy anything else, but I think maybe at that time that was probably a good idea. My point is, is that this is an efficiency that businesses of all sizes can, can utilize, okay? It really doesn't take a lot of extra manpower. It doesn't even take a lot of extra high-end technology. You really kind of have, at least to get started, almost everything you, ne you need. Companies like the size of GoDaddy probably have some pretty extravagant dashboards. I, I know that they knew pretty quickly on a measurement tool how, how big my audience was. But I don't think you have to have that in order to increase customer satisfaction or customer service productivity. Okay? Another one of the key performance indicators that I like to utilize is a campaign effectiveness. As I said earlier, um, this is a great way to define your efforts and your, the money you're spending in each of them. Now, we're going to talk just a little bit later about an ROI model that I have, but I want you to understand that when you think about um, the, the, what you're spending on social media, you really have got to include manpower, okay, the hourly manpower. Because that really is the key challenge that most businesses have is that manpower piece. So I'm going to move right into the ROI model. This is a sample model. I did run this model through the mechanisms that I use to evaluate. So the numbers are accurate, but I don't want to use my real customers up here. So this is a fairly simple example. And the other thing that's interesting about this example is that this example doesn't require you, the business, to have a ginormous audience in place already. In fact, if you're just getting started, this might be a great way for you to start to build your audience. Another thing of note is that when you do something like this with bloggers, the FCC requires that they reveal whether or not they've received any kind of compensation or even freebie in exchange for writing about your business. So in my mind, this is sort of a paid marketing tool, okay? 
it's a little bit different than somebody who just happens to run into your restaurant and say, yay, I love this place. Okay, that's, that is a, a non-paid uh, value. So when I took a look, I went a little heavy duty on some of these costs, but I did it because I wanted you to see in reality what some, what some of this cost, some of these things kind of cost. Content creation, under that number, I included what we would pay bloggers, okay, and uh, maybe some internal content creation as well. So one of the ways that we can evaluate ROI in social media is to take a look at some cost savings. Since we have our website up and running and we know how, great, how hard it is to get traffic to that website, we probably know what the cost per click is for an, for an ad on Google+, Plus, on Google. Um, so I, had, I established that um, using some keywords, Honolulu Restaurant, um, we drove the same amount of traffic to the website as we would have if we would have spent $1,700. So we take that $1,700, I'm sorry, 1775 so we take that amount of money and we say, I just saved the company at least that much amount of money. Then we said, using those bloggers, that's sort of a, a, another deflection cost, okay, like other types of, of media. This number right here, this is kind of debatable. You could probably increase that about 25% or you could probably decrease it about 25%. It's really going to depend on what kind of uh, media you typically utilize and what the reach is that you typically receive. Um, I don't really consider this quite the same as public relations. I think that's a slightly, I, I, think, I think it's an oversimplification of what public relations is. But for some people, that would, this would go in there in that category. We did talk about, I do talk about reach a little bit here in this number. I'm, I want you to understand that when people like myself talk about reach, we use it a lot in the same way that a television or a radio station does. In other words, it's your potential audience. It's not necessarily actual eyeballs, right? When I buy uh, an ad in a magazine and the circulation is 10,000, I know that 10,000 people may or may not see that ad. So we use reach in social media similarly. And when you're doing comparisons about what sort of um, marketing programs work for you and where you're getting the most return on your investment, consider reach similar to circulation or other, you know, Consider that an apples to apples. It's not quite, but it's just about right. In my example, um, we have some small victories. We increase the average check, $5. We assume in this example that the restaurant's open uh, six days a week. And um, we increase the check, the total number of checks per day. Small victories. We're not talking hundreds of thousands of checks here, but to the small business owner, an actual $17,000 $17, increase in revenue seems like a decent way to invest some money. Now, we did spend about $20,000 to do this campaign, but we also received some unsolicited word of mouth. There it is. There we have it. Anybody who runs a business is familiar with Yelp. We're especially familiar with TripAdvisor here in Honolulu. There's all kinds of review sites. When you run a campaign and you start to see a bump and in increase in your, just your number of reviews, then we know that there's an impact there just a little bit, okay? Now, I evaluate, um, did, independent, did these independent reviews, I evaluated them as either positive or neutral. In other words, if the service wasn't great and we got a negative response, I took that out of this equation, okay? But you may or may not want to do that. Because if you take that negative response out of your equation, are you really getting a true value of what your real potential long-term return is? And when you get that negative response, isn't it an opportunity for you to look inward a little bit and say, what, what can we do better? What do my, does my team need? Do they need better training? Do they need more information? What is it? What do they need? So the, again, these are kind of small numbers. I mean, we're not talking hundreds of thousands. And a lot of times in the Hawaii market, you're not going to get hundreds of thousands, all right? We have to be realistic in what we're going to obtain. But when I run this model through, I get about $5,600 in value. So what I really am trying to get you to understand is that when you evaluate the ROI of social media, use your business objectives, use the, the number of uh, departments in which social media is touching, and make sure that you incorporate some of the, the money saved and some of the intangible values that you're receiving from social, from social media. 
and of course, your revenue increase. One thing that I should note is that for a lot of businesses, especially if you're just starting out in social media, you may spend three to six months trying to decide whether you're doing the right thing and where you're, if you're doing it in the right place. In that circumstance, don't beat yourself up too much about the ROI. Give yourself a chance to get through some of those key performance indicators. See what, if, you're, if, you have, if you're spending the time in the right place. To me, key performance indicators are, am I spending my time doing the right thing and are my tactics working? Ultimately, ROI is, is my money working for me, right? So, but you may need that time to get through that process. You may need to train your employees. You may need to identify what you're really trying to accomplish. And sometimes your community is going to dictate for you, as I did with GoDaddy, how exactly you're going to use those social channels. So in our final uh, review, we uh, took a look at the ROI, and we got about a 5% return. Um, I'd, you know, when, again, when I compare this to other types of campaigns, I'm very pleased with a 5% return on a social media campaign. I just wanted to show you a couple other key performance indicators worth tracking in this particular example. Um, here's the, on the bottom one, the unsolicited positive or neutral social media mentions. Um, but again, you may decide that you want to include your um, negative mentions as a way to balance out some of the numbers for you a little bit. So before we press go, before we get started, a couple of reminders for you. Baselines. If you want to measure where you're going, you've got to know where you started from. If you're trying to measure things like increase in sales, easily done. But if you're trying to measure things like brand recognition or attitudes, you really need to have, have done some due diligence and have those baselines in place so that you know whether you're shifting that needle or not. A lot of businesses miss this, okay? And so if you don't get those things in place before you run a campaign, you're really going to struggle with knowing whether or not you got to where you were going. Another, another way of putting this is what does success look like for your company? What are you trying to accomplish? From there, you can decide whether or not what your baselines are and where you want to move the needle. Your business goals. Again, what are we trying to accomplish? Move past, I want to create a community. Move past, I mean, I, I love those things, but move past those things and really get into the nitty gritty of what it is that you're trying to do. If you just identify three things, you're well on your way to identifying whether those three things are the right three things for you or not. But just start with something. A lot of businesses have a hard time with this because it's time consuming. But if you evaluate your key performance indicators on a monthly basis, and your key performance indicators should be numbers that you can review at a glance, then you can start to see the trends pretty quickly. And you don't necessarily have to spend hours and hours and hours reporting. Another key feature that I think is really key for uh, small and medium-sized businesses and large businesses is an easy-to-update website. The minute you, get, you start moving through social media, you're going to say, I need to put up a blog post, or I need to put up a picture, or I want to... And boy, let me tell you, there's nothing more frustrating than hearing from your guy. It's going to take him a couple weeks to get that done. You sort of lose the impact. You also want to have a website that's easy to create some landing pages. I, uh, I personally am a WordPress user. I'm a WordPress advocate. I love, it is a free platform. Um, it's open source platform. It's always being improved upon. A lot of people uh, think of WordPress as a blog. It's actually a much more sophisticated tool today than it's ever been before. But the beauty of WordPress is that the back end looks a little bit like you're creating a Word document. It's really, really easy to manage. A little bit of training, um, and your employees can be off and running uh, and you can let your, you know, the brain power, the IT guys do other things, hire better use things than just loading a picture on a website, okay? Um, your landing pages, and then there's that final piece, web, website analytics. I rarely can get through measuring business solutions without identifying some of those pieces digitally in uh, website analytics, Google, uh, op Optima. I mean, I, I don't care what you use. Just use it. Use it consistently. Take the time to set up your funnels. Take the time to set up your goals in these systems. There you go. There's your highest and best use of time for some of those really s smart guys. Um, and so that you really have an opportunity to see where you're going. I mean, it's mystifying sometimes 
and I understand the mystification when people say, I have this website and I've spent all this time on social media and I really don't know if it's working for me. And, I, and the first thing I say is, well, can I, can I take a look at your Google Analytics? I mean, I, I'd like to see kind of where, oh, we don't have that up. I bet you're mystified. I am too. I don't, you know, we have to start here. So we got to start with getting some information and, you, and Google Analytics, free, easy to implement on your website, small way to start tracking some of your successes. And that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm happy to um, answer them for you. Yes? How are you measuring social media analytics? How, how am I using analytics? How are you measuring social media analytics? I don't understand the question, John. You're smarter than me. What tools are you using oh. to measure your social effectiveness? Effectiveness. OK, so what tools am I using? So Google Analytics is one, obviously. Um, and then this information all comes from business information, really. It's not really about I'm using a particular tool. Uh, there are some tools like Radian 6, which I think is a really s super fantastic tool that will measure things like reach and sentiment, um, and also integrates with Salesforce. So I really think that's the future of social analytics, is being able to understand the customer experience from point A to point B. A little difficult for uh, a small, medium-sized business right now to do, but that's going to evolve. So while I use a lot of other tools to manage the output, uh, the tools that I use to manage this sort of information is really based on business information. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. Yep. What percentage of an advertising budget do you see going social versus traditional? Uh, yeah, tough question. Um, we're seeing that the budgets are growing, but because this is still sort of a mystery, that budget isn't necessarily blowing up. Right, um, we're seeing anywhere from on, uh, anywhere from a 25 to a 35 percent average of total marketing budget. Um, if we can get this number to something that the entire industry agrees on, uh, which we are working on, but we're not quite there yet, um, then I think we'll start to see that number increase. But I, but you know, I, 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 I you know, as a, as a traditional marketer, I worry just a little bit about that because I really think that all these things work really beautifully together. And I wouldn't necessarily suggest that you abandon one for the other. Thanks again for your time. I really appreciate it.